50,000 subscribers. Who would have thought? I I certainly wouldn't have two years ago, two, two and a half, two, somewhere between two and two and a half years ago when I started the channel. Um, yeah, crazy. I gained like 10,000 subscribers just from the bird box video alone. Um, so welcome aboard. Also, I should, regarding that video, I should, I should have a few follow-up comments. Um, a lot of, a lot of you made it clear that I, I sort of, the way I framed my review of the movie made it seem as though I was sort of looking down upon people who enjoyed it, and that's not what I wanted to do at all. I, obviously everyone can like what they like. Personally, I didn't like the movie, and, and I didn't find many redeeming qualities, but the last thing I want is to give off the message that you're not allowed to like it. Um, I'd also like to apologize to, uh, I guess, the filmmakers for not being, not framing it as constructively as I could have. Um, at the beginning, I offered some solutions, like making it a three-part miniseries would improve the pacing, but toward the end, it was just a fucking teardown piece. Um, so I apologize for that. I won't apologize, however, for giving it a two out of 10, because I did think the movie was terrible, and I'm allowed to think the movie's terrible. Um, moving on. I should also clarify, because this is a, a Q&A and it's bound to, I don't know, people have asked. These posters are not all my favorite movies. I've got a couple of my favorite movies here, but I, I started collecting posters when I was like 16, and for my room, I just wanted iconic posters. So half of these are movies, I mean, I don't dislike any of the movies that I have posters for, but like Pulp Fiction, I have two, two things on display. I like Pulp Fiction. I think it's great. I think it's innovative and cool and important. It's not my favorite Tarantino film. It's not one of my favorites in general. Um, but it's iconic. Star Wars, same thing. I like Star Wars, but I don't love Star Wars. But, you know, I got the poster because it's an iconic poster. And I like the, the aesthetic of these sort of classic posters on my wall. So... Next time you you uh, wonder about my, my favorites, this is not the best indicator. All right, moving on to these questions. When are you going to do the ASMR video? Next, literally after this video, I'm gonna do it. I already, I've got some, I've got some, some good stuff lined up for it. Um, I still have to figure out what settings to, how, how to record ASMR. I don't, I'm not that experienced. But it's coming. What are your thoughts on the American film industry? In other words, do you think that the Golden Globes and the Oscars feel the need to play it safe by nominating films, actors, and actresses that are more favored by the vast majority of audiences? Ironically, the Golden Globes are happening right now as I'm filming this, um, but <laughs> I really don't care that much about the Golden Globes this year. Um, just A, because of the specific nominations this year being ridiculous. And B, just, who cares about the Golden Globes? It, I don't know. It's just, um, to answer your question, though, I, I think the example of last year's Oscars sort of encapsulates that. Um, Jennifer Lawrence, who was a member of the Academy, turned Phantom Thread off after five minutes because she's like, I could already tell this wasn't a movie I was going to like. And it wasn't her job to judge the movie but to judge the acting she wasn't able to do that if she turned the movie off five minutes in as a result vicky creeps is not nominated for this incredible role that she's in and meryl streep who's sort of phoning it in i mean i don't i don't have anything against meryl streep but her performance in the post is sort of business as usual whereas vicky creeps delivered one of the most dynamic performances of the year, and I think it's a shame that Meryl Streep was nominated and she wasn't. But Meryl Streep has that star power, so I don't know. I think that that sort of represents how I feel about that. I still, I'm not as cynical about the Oscars as most people are. Most people are like, or maybe not most people, but a lot of people I've seen online are like, the Oscars is just a bunch of big wigs jerking each other off, and I, I sort of get it, but I don't know. I'm a little 
sentimental about the Oscars, and it makes me sad when they fuck up, which they so often do. Which film has impacted your life the most? I don't know. Um, got a lot of Clockwork Orange. Was very useful in high school in my in my English essays. I would reference the the moral ambiguity of that film a lot. Um, I don't know. Um, eight and a half got me thinking a lot about my my approach to art more so than than other movies have um there will be blood is another movie that i reference a lot i don't know how do you how do you measure how something impacts your life like your your actual lifestyle or your outlook on the world um i don't know that's it's a tough question you got me stumped do you have welsh heritage you have to tell me because it's really important and i need to know this person has been very adamant that I that I let them know whether or not I have Welsh heritage. Um, yes, I do have Welsh heritage. Was was it the last name Williams that gave it away, or my overwhelming whiteness? Don't know why it's important, um, but there you go. I have Welsh heritage. Where do you stand on the objective versus subjective debate? Do you believe there's an objective standard for film, as with some other art forms that one should strive for on a technical level? Or do you believe all of it is subjective and only based on taste and preference? I think there are certainly objective factors. Um, I know in, in some of my past videos I've sort of... People have interpreted that I'm one of those people who, think, who thinks film is objective and something can be objectively good or objectively bad. But I think there certainly are objective factors, you know, continuity errors, plot holes. I think even in terms of cinematography, there are objective factors, whether a shot is overexposed or underexposed, that, that has physical indicators. The, the physical loss of detail objectively indicates how over or underexposed a shot is. But I think it's subjective how one can, can use, for instance, over or underexposure and how someone can appreciate over or underexposed footage. For instance, I know Robert Richardson is a master of overexposed shots and making them look gorgeous, and Gordon Willis is great at underexposing and playing with shadows and stuff, so there are objective factors, but, you know, obviously, ultimately, it's subjective, so, yeah. Who are you outside of YouTube slash film? What do you enjoy doing? <sighs> Who am I outside of YouTube slash film, and what do I enjoy doing? I'm... I'm a film student, and I enjoy watching movies. Um, aside from that, I also... Uh, what, what else do I do? Aside from that, I am a person who has friends and, and hangs out with them. I... Okay, music is, is different from film. That's something I do. I play a few instruments. I'm minoring in music, even though I'm in film school, but that's more so that I can score my own film, so it still ties back into film. Um, I don't know, I think most aspects of my personality in some way tie back into my desire to be a filmmaker. Um, or I guess an artist in general. There are a bunch of different mediums I'd like to explore. What are your favorite foreign films? Um, so I, I haven't, I don't think, well, I definitely haven't seen enough foreign films to really appreciate them. I'd, I'd like to eventually reach a point where the concept of foreign films doesn't really apply, but I haven't reached that point yet. So just going off my my top 20 that I have on Letterboxd, Hiroshima Monomore, sorry about the pronunciation there, Eight and a Half, City of God, and The Handmaiden are all some of my favorites. And there are obviously a bunch that I didn't mention just now that I also love. What's the worst film you've ever watched? <laughs> okay, so in 2015, I went to Florida Supercon, and there was this one panel every night at, like, midnight that would show these independent films, and, like, like actual independent films. I know nowadays independent films still have, like, studios behind them, but these are, like, actual independent films. Like, the people just raised the money themselves, got their friends, and shot these. And one of the nights, this horror movie showed 
called Headless. And the plot is about a serial killer who he, he kills his victims, he beheads them, he takes their eyes out, eats their eyeballs, and then fucks their skull, I think through the eye socket. I don't, I don't remember exactly. Um, and it flashes back to him as a kid and his mom has him locked up in a cage and he's like attracted to his sister. And, and in one scene it, they show him cutting a guy's dick off and it's, <laughs> it's silly for sure. But it was just like, that was, that was one of the movies that had me walking out and saying, I, I really wasted two hours of my life on that. Are you still practicing music? If so, is it just a hobby or will you try incorporating it in your studies? Um, yeah, I, I do still practice music. Not as much as I'd like to, which is ironic considering I'm minoring in music. Um, I need to make more time because I'm not practicing nearly enough with any of my instruments. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm minoring in music. I want to score my own films, as I mentioned. That's, that's the goal. Um, I think I was actually interested in in music before film. I don't know. I got my violin for like my eighth birthday, I think, and I got my camera for my ninth birthday. But I think it took me a while to take my first violin. I don't. It, it was around the same time, and so I've always sort of balanced the two. Um, ultimately, filmmaking is is number one because because I can combine both. Um, but music is definitely something I'm passionate about. What do you think about stage-to-screen adaptations? I know you've talked about page-to-screen, so is it any different in your opinion? So I did a project my senior year of high school where I had to watch 36 movies for, for reasons I'll explain some other time. But a lot of classic Hollywood films I had to watch, and a lot of them were based on stage plays. And... In, in classical Hollywood style, it's a little hard to discern because most movies were essentially stage plays that were, that were, they were filmed on a soundstage as though they were stage plays that are just edited together and, and have some more cinematic aspects. And so it was a little harder to discern, but as, as it got into like the seventies, I could really start to tell when something was originally a stage play. However, there was a movie that came back, came came out a couple years ago. Um, it's called The Party, and I remember watching the trailer for that and thinking, you yeah, know, it's it's a, a character-driven one-location film, probably short. I thought from the trailer that it was adapted from a stage play, and it wasn't. It's an original screenplay. So, who who really knows? Um, Fences, though, that was, okay, that's that's a great example of a film that I haven't seen the play. I thought the script was, was great. Well, the dialogue was incredible, but as a movie, it felt very lacking in cinematic elements. Like, there wasn't really a reason to translate it to screen other than to get more people to watch it, which worked because I saw it and I haven't seen the stage play. I'd like to see the stage play, but um, didn't really seem like a worthwhile adaptation, in my opinion. What inspired you to delve deep into film? Um, wanting to be a filmmaker and yeah, that's about it. And then I had opinions on movies and I made a YouTube channel and then that kind of forced me to go even deeper. But I wouldn't say the YouTube channel is the reason for that. I'd say it was just my drive to be a filmmaker. Any new short films you're working on? Yes, I have been doing the finishing touches for this film that was for a class last semester. Um, it's five minutes. It's called Patricia. Here's here's the one still I'm going to release before, before the film comes out. Um, don't know why it's been taking me so long. I just need to finalize the music some of the the sound design because it's all all the sound was done in post just because of the the nature of the project um aside from that it, it's literally just the last few touches and then i'll have it out hopefully in january but if not then early february so stay tuned it's very different from ketchup so i don't know what to what to tell you to expect 
but yeah. How do you decide what movies you want to review on your channel, and are there any movies that you planned on reviewing but just never got around to it? Um, when I started out, the first review I ever did was Rogue One, and I had just started my YouTube channel, and I was getting no views on any of my videos, and I was like, you know what, I gotta review a popular movie so that I can get these views, I'm gonna review Rogue One, most popular movie of the year, I'm gonna call it Rogue One Review, and I'm, I'm gonna get those clicks. Um, didn't work out, obviously. Um, don't watch that review. I'm, I'm, I've, I've decanonized that review. I no longer feel the same way about Rogue One. Um, and then La La Land, like two weeks later, I wanted to consistently do reviews, and then I just didn't. The next review I did was like a month later, the series of unfortunate events, and then I didn't do anything until 13 Reasons Why came along. And then I was like, okay, this is a review that, that actually you know, matters to me, because at that point, it was a hot take to dislike 13 Reasons Why. Um, so that's why I made that. And then stuff like, stuff like Death Note or Bird Box, I just thought were terrible, and I had to, I had to explain why I found them terrible. And something like It, I reviewed because it allowed for me to segue into another topic, which was adaptations. Um, and since then, I don't know, like Bandersnatch, it was, po I'd like to do more reviews because for a while I was sort of under the impression that like, you know, if I'm not going to review every movie that comes out, there's got to be some significant reason for me to review a movie, um, which still makes sense to me, but I would like to make more content. I would like to, uh, do more reviews. So Hopefully I will have time to do that and, and review more movies that I just have thoughts on that I'd like to share in a video. Some underrated films? Here, I'll just, I'll just drop a few titles here. I can't really think of any on the fly, but in the edit I'll, I'll think of some. How is your Tisch experience so far? Do you think getting a film degree is worth it slash a necessary condition to be in the film industry? I certainly don't think it's a necessary condition to be in the film industry. I think going to film school is very much playing it safe, um, even though it costs a lot of money and I'm severely in debt. Um, well, I will be by the end of... Anyway, anyway, uh, first semester went well. Um, I'm going to make a video at the end of my spring semester about the whole freshman year, um, you know, detailing what the classes were like, my, my thoughts on them, my critiques, praises, all that, all that shit. Um, so yeah, you'll you'll hear more about that in like May or June or something. Favorite director. It's it's Stanley Kubrick. I'm I'm usually not the kind of guy that can narrow down a favorite anything, favorite genre of music, favorite musical artist, favorite movie. But I I, I don't know. Something about Stanley Kubrick is is resonates with me more than any other filmmaker. Like like there are these great filmmakers that I hold on this on this high pedestal and they're all they're all, you know, god tier in in my eyes. But above them is Stanley Kubrick. And maybe I I feel more strongly about him than I should. You know, maybe there are people who bring stuff to the table that he can't and and, and I'm just not looking at things the the way I should, but I don't know. I I worship that guy, like every pretentious film student, and uh, there's no, there's no hiding that. I have multiple books about Stanley Kubrick, biography, in-depth analysis of his filmography, I've got that cute little Stanley Kubrick archives book, I don't know, it's, it's Kubrick. Which critically acclaimed films do you find underwhelming slash not worth the praise? Um, the one I usually go to go go for on this is the Shawshank Redemption which is a movie that I think is good but like not as good as pop culture would lead one to believe you know it's number one on IMDb not that that really means anything but I don't know it's like a seven or an eight for me which is still you know it's still great but I don't know that that's one that I always was like why why this movie above everything else? 
Would you rather have a career as a film critic or a filmmaker? A filmmaker. Come on. This is this is this is fun. I enjoy this. I would I would like to continue doing this even if I became a filmmaker, but if I had to choose one, I'm sorry guys. It's it's filmmaking, obviously. Your favorite bad movies, favorite film scores, soundtrack. Favorite bad movies. Um I mean Obviously, like, The Room is fun to, to go to. One of my friends at NYU always tells me about these screenings, and I've been going to those. Um, I just watched Troll 2 for the first time, and it was even worse than I expected, which was was a pleasant surprise. Um, I don't know. My, my, my friend has introduced me to a lot of bad movies, but yeah, I'm not cultured enough to really have a refined favorite bad movie. As far as favorite scores or soundtracks, um, I've got a few here. Um, Pulp Fiction, I've got La La Land, uh, The Graduate, of course. Um, I've got a few non-scores. Elevator to the Gallows, The Life Aquatic. Um, but recently, I have not been able to stop listening to the Phantom Thread score. Um, it's probably the best in the last several years, in my opinion. Um, just just the more I listen to it, the more warm and and whole and and moved I am by it. Um, this year, my favorite um, soundtrack was "If Beale Street Could Talk." Um, that's another very intimate and and warm and moving soundtrack but I, I i gotta find better words to describe music than warm and moving and and good but point is uh beale street good phantom thread good these movies good how many movies would you say you watch per month in theaters i try to watch at least three or four a month i don't always succeed in my endeavors sometimes i do i've already seen three in January, which is pretty good because there's still a lot of January left. Um, but sometimes I don't quite hit that, but, um, I'm constantly watching movies on, on my own, like old, older, maybe not older movies, but movies that aren't in theaters. So, you know, I try to see, I guess like at least 10 a month, give or take, I don't know. I never really measured that. Um, what are your top three albums of all time? How am I supposed to answer that? Uh, I, I don't know. Um, the the album I find myself listening to most, just in general, is this Getz Gilberto album. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced that. But I mean, that's just one genre, you know. I I can have a top three jazz albums a top three rock alternative even though that's not a real genre albums hip-hop class or, <laughs> there aren't classical albums but movie scores i don't know that's i'm sorry i can't answer that thoughts on bohemian rhapsody um you'll hear my thoughts on bohemian rhapsody when i do my best and worst of 2018 what music do you listen to um, I try to listen to most genres of music. Um, I, I definitely don't exclude based on genre. Um, yeah, I don't know. There will be, you know, month, month, months long stretches where I'll just listen to one genre, be it hip hop or classical, or or I'm just gonna list off genres, but. I don't know. I, there are also times where in a single car ride, I'll go through like five different genres. So, I don't know. Yo, do you like write song songs? You want to post them? Uh, I haven't written a song like, like in the most general sense in a while. Um, but... And, and none of the songs I ever wrote were good. I'd always try in middle school and they'd always be terrible. But I mean, like, I wrote the music for my film Ketchup, 
I wrote the theme song for my upcoming film, Patricia. I'd like to one day, you know, do some sort of music project just on its own that has nothing to do with film. That's just songs that I wrote. Um, but I don't think I have the chops for that just yet. So we'll see. What do you think about Wes Anderson and Tarantino movies? I like most of them. I think I get why people dislike them. There's, um, I mean, their style is very, very rigid. Even though Tarantino's style is, is fluid, it's rigidly fluid. Every film feels like the same person behind it. Um, same with Wes Anderson, obviously. But I think the thing about that is is that they're still telling different stories every time and it's just seeing these different stories through the same lens like like they're I have a video about this uh go go watch that video I do a better job explaining it there than I'm doing now do you think YouTube will affect your future do you plan to make it more than just a hobby I hope it affects my future and I hope to make it more than a hobby um from the get-go I was sort of hoping this would be a way to sort of build a bridge so I could get into the industry somehow, um, perhaps through crowdfunding a film once I reach a large enough audience. Um, yeah, that's that's something that could happen in the future, depending on, on how large my audience grows. I enjoy making money off of YouTube, and it would be very nice as a job. Um, you know, hopefully this summer... I can get an actual, or I, I can do this instead of having to get an actual job. So I'm hoping to grow my channel a little, a little more by then. Um, but I mean, yeah, I, I hope both of those things are true, but YouTube isn't the end goal. I, I definitely don't want to, not that there's anything wrong with being a YouTuber as, as a lifelong career. I think a lot of people are doing great stuff with that. I just personally really want to be a filmmaker so that's the end goal for me what made you want to attend nyu uh back in seventh grade it was because i read the hollywood reporter list but um over the years i was reading more about different schools and different different places and stuff and different approaches and for for a number of factors nyu was was the the choice for me partially because of new york partially because of nyu specific things for instance um NYU and USC, big difference there is that USC owns all of the student films. So for instance, if I made Patricia at USC, I would have to get permission from the school to post it on my channel. And, you know, maybe they wouldn't let me post it at all if I were to monetize it or something like that. I don't know exactly how that works, but I know they own the rights to all of the films you make while there. Whereas at NYU, you own the rights to your own films, which is something I appreciate very much. What started your love for film? Um, honestly, making films or videos. I So my, my backstory is when I was like eight years old, my brother and I would fuck around on his camera and try to do stupid YouTube videos based on the videos we would watch. And so my parents got me a camera for my ninth birthday and... I started making videos with my friends and stuff and somewhere around fifth or sixth grade I it was never like an instant that I realized I was going to be a filmmaker it slowly over time just sort of I came to accept that that was the path I was on and because of that I began to watch movies more seriously um, which I guess is kind of opposite from I don't know I feel like most people like movies and then want to become a filmmaker but i don't know one thing you like slash dislike about yourself well i'm not gonna say what i like about myself because that's cocky what i dislike about myself is that i mean i'm i'll own up to the fact that i'm pretentious and as much as i'll try not to be i know that i always will be unfortunately I'll tr I, I try my best not to be and and I am despite <clears throat> despite my restraint so there's that favorite actor and actress 
favorite actor is probably Daniel Day Lewis. I, yeah, yeah, I'll go with Daniel Day Lewis. Favorite actress is a little, a little tougher. I may change this at some point, but at the moment, I'm gonna say Tilda Swinton because usually she does those outlandish roles, especially in Suspiria. But she's able to to do humanity. She's able to be a very intimate and and emotional actor. Um, and I don't think she gets enough credit for how much talent she brings to literally every movie she's in. What art forms besides film inspire you? Uh, basically everything. I want to I want to write a book or multiple. I want to write a musical or a, a stage play, or multiple, of course. Um, again, I'd like to pursue independent music projects, or music projects independent from my film making, be it a regular album of some sort, or some long-form composition. Um, really, the only form of art that gets on my nerves is slam poetry. Um, because slam poetry is, is uh... I'm not going to hate on slam poetry here. If you guys like slam poetry, that's fine. I personally don't like it. Can you draw? No. That's that's the one thing I guess I should have mentioned before. I, I can't fucking draw to save my life. You saw my storyboards. That was terrible. It was terrible. Well, what, what is that? I can't even draw stick figures well. I No, I, I can't draw. I could practice, but I, I think I think I'm kind of a lost cause when it comes to drawing. Do you read? If so, what's your favorite book? Um, I really love John Steinbeck, so The Grapes of Wrath is one of my favorites. I really like East of Eden too, but I think The Grapes of Wrath is more consistent. Um, what, what else do I like? One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest is one of my favorites. Um, the Count of Monte Cristo. Uh, if we're if we're talking graphic novels, I'll say Watchmen. It's uh, Watchmen is every bit as incredible as people say it is. Um, I read it like two years ago, and and that was yeah, I thought it was incredible. Basic but solid question: Where do you want to be in ten years? Hopefully, I will have made a movie or two that a decent amount of people have watched. If I'm twenty nine, going on thirty. Hopefully, I will have done something, um, because nothing nothing scares me more than... So, like, when I turned 18, I had this moment where I was like, wow, I'll never, I'll never be a child prodigy. And obviously, I knew I wasn't going to be, but it was one of those things where it's like, you know, a 16-year-old would do something and become famous, and my 13-year-old self would be like, oh, well... That person's 16. I have plenty of time to do that. Um, like the person who wrote Aragon at 15, published at 18. I tried writing a book. It didn't work out. I'm 19 now. I'm not going to be able to do that. Um, and then looking at people like, like, obviously, I'm not going to compare myself to Orson Welles because he's he he was crazy. But I still I, I still see people who are in their early 20s. Who are doing incredible stuff that I'm just not doing. You know, I'm in I'm in school. I'm making YouTube videos that are okay, I think, um, but you know, nothing on the level that some of these people are doing. Um, this got a little more anxious than I'd like, so let's let's move on. Do you make an effort to dress like a smart guy? I don't make an effort to dress like a smart guy, but in my reviews, I do like to have a sense of professionalism, which is why I'll often wear a tie. I don't wear a tie in my, my normal clothes. I don't, I don't know. Um, as far as like what I'm wearing now, I just like sweaters. So I, we I wear sweaters. Um, that's just, I don't know what to tell you there. I don't really wear t-shirts. I don't like them very much. Or at least not short sleeve t-shirts. I'll wear long sleeve t-shirts and that's fine. I just don't like exposing my arms. Although, short sleeve button downs are okay. I don't know. I don't know. What was your first ever favorite film? First ever favorite film was this this <laughs> Cartoon Network, 
I think, Cartoon Network original movie called Reanimated, where this kid gets hit by a train at Disney World, and they give him Walt Disney's cryogenically frozen brain, and he starts seeing these animated characters. Well, it's, it's not actually Disney World, and it's not actually Walt Disney. It's that movie's version of those things. And then he starts seeing these animated characters. Um, and I'd watch that movie, like, every day, for some reason. How did your channel come to be? So in high school, I knew a few people who had YouTube channels, and I didn't think they necessarily made great stuff, but they posted consistently, and they actually got a decent amount of subscribers. So, you know, junior year, I was thinking, well, actually sophomore year for a class, I did a, a, basically a video essay, biography of Stanley Kubrick, uh, and, and an analysis of his films, and people made jokes that I was a YouTuber, but junior year I was thinking about those people and I was like you know if I post consistently I can get a decent amount of subscribers now what could I what could I consistently talk about oh well movies easy uh, so then I made a YouTube channel and I haven't been posting consistently and I've I've you know seen the consequences of that I'll try to post more consistent I always I always tell myself I'll try to post more consistently we'll see how it goes Who's an actor everyone loves, but you don't understand why? Um, so right now, a few people I know don't like Lucas Hedges, despite him being a popular and acclaimed actor. And so I, I think Lucas Hedges was great in Manchester by the Sea. I think he deserved the attention he got there. But I do agree that he hasn't been great in stuff like Lady Bird or Three Billboards or even even Boy Erased. I, I don't know. He's just kind of bland in those movies, in my opinion. And I, I think he's talented. I think he showed that talent in Manchester by the Sea. I just don't think he's brought that back to the table with any of the other films of his that I've seen. How old are you? I'm 19. My birthday is September 18th, 1999. Um, hopefully no one uses that information against me. I don't. It's my birthday. I don't know what they would use against me. Fuck, marry, kill, Kubrick, Lynch, Anderson. Well, I'm going to marry Kubrick, of course. Now, would I, would I fuck David Lynch or would I fuck Wes Anderson? Or would I kill David Lynch or would I kill Wes Anderson? Um, I don't know. I guess I'd kill Wes Anderson. And fuck David Lynch. He's got some transcendental meditational wisdom. I don't know how that would help, but uh... okay. So that that marks the end of the questions. Um, thank you for watching this Q and A. If if you watched this long, I this is unscripted, of course. Um, for those who don't know, I script all of my videos, so this is a little a little looser. But um, yeah, that's I will advertise that. Um, so I think I'm going to do these Q&A videos every 50,000 subscribers. So when I reach 100,000, I'll do another. If I reach 150,000, I'll do another, um, etc. But for my patrons, I do do monthly Q&As shorter than this one, just because less people ask que fewer people ask questions on Patreon. But that's something that's that's available to patrons. This is me plugging my Patreon. Um, if it's something you're interested in and you have the financial resources for that feel free if you don't no hard feelings um yeah i thought that was something i should advertise but yeah i'm i i can't thank you enough for bringing me to 50,000 a year ago i had a tenth of the subscribers i have now which is crazy to think about in a year this channel has grown by it's grown 10 times it's crazy it's crazy it's hard to believe, but it's because of you guys. Again, I, I can't thank you enough. Um, hopefully, you'll enjoy the stuff that I've, I've got coming out soon. It's a lot of stuff that I'm excited to release. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully this will be an exciting January and February, and hopefully that'll pave the way to an exciting 2019 in general. Um, so yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this now. But I'm... happy with how this has gone.